I'm here with Fabiola. She's from the Ivory Coast and I'm really interested in her story because she was raised Muslim and she found the Lord Jesus Christ and is now serving God as a Christian. Amen. Amen. Thank you so very much, Donna, for giving me the opportunity as a blessing. And I thank God for your life and for your ministry. I pray that God will increase you more and more in Jesus' name. Thank you. Amen. 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 Yeah. As she said, my name is Fabiola and my last name is Kulibali. I'm originally from the Ivory Coast, which is in West Africa. And we are French speakers over there, so <laughs> some part the English can have some little mistake, but I believe that the Holy Spirit will help each one of us that listening to this testimony to be impact and to have uh, life changing. So I'm so grateful to the Lord for his love for our life and for his mercy upon us. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And thank you, Father God, in Jesus' name. Amen. So back to the testimony. <laughs> is I mean, I, what I'm going to say is um, such a great honor for me. Uh, I will never imagine that I will see myself talking about the love of God and talking about Jesus Christ because um, I was born in the Muslim family, raised as a Muslim, praying five times a day, believing in Maomet as my savior and uh, doing everything that the Muslim doing, you know, and at one point of my life, I was wondering and I was asking myself so many questions. Uh, so my cousin, which was very close to me, passing away and people were dying around me. So I was like, well, let us see this because that could be me because my cousin and I we were like uh, same age and she passed away just like that. And I was like, that could be me. So I'm starting questioning myself concerning eternity. Where uh, are we spending the eternity? You know, after this life that we live in here on earth, you know, what is the purpose of our life here on earth, and uh, where are we going to spend the eternity? Mm -hmm. So uh, I asked my mom. She's a great Muslim. She pray and I asked her, and I like, um, well. If something happened to me right now, or if something happened to one of us right now, where are we going after this life here on earth? And she was like, well, you can find out here on earth as a Muslim, you know, if you're going to hell or if you're going to heaven. Of course, uh, she believe in hell, she believe in heaven, but you can find out uh, here where's the way out you're gonna make heaven so she she just told me that when you're gonna die and you go there uh, in that unknowing place they will check what you were doing on earth mm -hmm. what you did good and what you did bad and then they will put that in the scale and check and see which one is higher mm -hmm. so if your bad doing was higher <laughs> so shred you going to hell and so I was like oh my gosh mm -hmm. <laughs> and at that point of my life <laughs> I thought to myself, I'm like, Fabi, I think you're on your way to hell. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're on your way to hell. And I was like, there is no way that I can uh, possibly be so perfect and be so correct. So, uh, and then this starting really bothering me. Mm -hmm. And I have a friend, uh, we were working together. She was my coworker mm -hmm. and she was a strong Christian believer. And she, I always see her with her Bible and uh, with her Bible and uh, praying and you know, for me, mm. I was looking at her like I was looking down on her actually. I'm like, she really don't know what she's doing because I was my my conviction was like you know, I'm Muslim and yes, as I was saying, uh, my conviction for me it was like you know. I'm always seeing Christians like they lost. They don't know what they're doing, you know. Mm -hmm. The truth uh, is, yeah, we believe in Mahomet. It is our Messiah, so yeah. And 
you know, like, like I was saying, I asked my mom. So I was kind of like, this was really bothering me. I really don't know why, why this uh, 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 desire for me to find the truth, you know. And I went, I asked her one day. The friend. Uh, my girlfriend, uh -huh. you know, <laughs> at the break. So I was like, well, I have a question for you. Oh, she was nice. I was very rude to her. I was very mean to her, you know, because for me, you know, she doesn't even, she was my friend, but we were not that close mm -hmm. because, you know, I believe that there is no communion between me and her, uh -huh. you know. So I have to be, uh, I mean, say hello to her, hi, just because we we're co worker, uh -huh. you know, so I don't want to follow ship with her. Right. But I was like, to you, she's an unbeliever. Exactly. For mm -hmm. me, she was an unbeliever, you know. So um, I went and I said, okay, I have a question for you. She was so sweet. She was so open and so nice. She said, yeah, um, um, yeah, what's your question? And I say, um, what is, uh, how you make heaven mm -hmm. uh, according to your belief, mm -hmm. you know? And uh, she said, I said, oh, no, actually my question was to her, I was like, um, if you die right now, where are you going? Mm. Oh, she answered me with such a conviction. She was like, whoa, I know what I'm going, I'm on my way to heaven. And I was like, how oh, you know, how can you be that sure? Mm -hmm. And I was like, I'm like, you're not perfect. She was like, well, I know, Jesus paid the price for me already. <laughs> so I'm on my way to heaven. Mm -hmm. And I was like, something clicked on me, <laughs> and I was mm -hmm. like, yeah. I say also, and she goes like, I'm like, you like all of us, you know? Yeah. She goes like, yeah. The difference is, she I received Jesus as my Lord and Savior, uh -huh. so is the one who paid the price for me. I just believe in the price that we pay on the cross, mm -hmm. and um, I'm like, so what do you mean? You mean if I right now give my life to Jesus, I'm going to heaven? She goes like, yeah, it's, that's all you need to do. You believe. He came, he paid the, we all see her, but he came, he paid the price. And if we believe in the price that he paid on the cross, we on our way to heaven mm -hmm. and we surrender our life and it will lead us and it will guide us. This was like, um, I'm like, no, it cannot be that easy. Mm -hmm. It cannot be that simple. There is no way. For me, we're talking about eternity. So we're talking about something very big and something. So I'm like, just like that. I just have to say, Jesus, I give you my life. She said, yeah, you just have to believe that deep down in your heart and confess it that Jesus is your Lord and Savior. He paid the price for you and he paid the big price. There is nothing that you can do. Actually, she told me, she told me, listen, I promise you, you cannot be too perfect to make heaven. Mm -hmm. You can't because this price, salvation, is by the price that Jesus paid on the cross. Mm -hmm. And I was like, well, I want to try because, you know, my mom told me that if I want to make heaven, I need to be those, I need to do this, you know, like try to be perfect. My good thing has to be higher. Mm -hmm. She goes like, uh-uh, it's not about works. And I was like, so it's about what? She goes like, yeah, it's the grace of God. So just receive it, that grace, receive the finished work of Jesus. And I was like, no, that's too easy. Mm -hmm. That's too, uh -uh, I can take it because, you know, I was, I grew up in the culture where you have to earn it. Mm -hmm. You have to work for, you know, yeah. so simply like that, somebody going to tell you like, just receive Jesus and you save, <laughs> uh, uh, this is out of normal. <laughs> so. And then she also told me, she goes like, you know what? She said, I said, well, I'm really questioning this thing because I want to know people are dying around me. My, my cousin, she was my best friend. She was very close to me. She passed away. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, that could be me. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and I, I'm really thinking about that. Then she said, okay, well, we're going to say a prayer and we're going to ask God to reveal himself to you and to speak to you. Oh my gosh. When she said, we're going to ask God to speak to you. <laughs> And I was like, now I'm done with you because you're not making no sense right now. You want God to talk to me like the big God, uh -huh. like, oh my gosh, I'm seeing God like, you know, you yeah. want God, the creator of heaven and hell and earth to speak to me. Who am I? Uh -huh. She goes like, God can speak to you. God love you. So she, and I did tell her because, you know, us as a Muslim, we believe that Jesus is a prophet, but is not uh, the son of God, right. you know? So she said, I'm going to pray, but I said, okay, I want you to pray, but don't say the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. 
you can pray, you know, pray and ask God mm -hmm. to, to talk to me. She said, okay, I do the prayer. And she agreed with me and she did the prayer. Mm -hmm. And then we're gonna forget about that conversation that we did have. And the big thing with my life, it was like, uh, after that conversation that I did have with her, uh -huh. two weeks later, it was um, around 3 a.m. Uh -huh. I was sleeping and I have a vision. That was the amazing thing. I, I'm talking about that and it was like it was just yesterday. I have a vision and the, a bright light. So bright that I couldn't even open my eyes. It was so bright but so soft. And I heard a voice. And that voice was talking. I love you. It called me by my name. And it said, I love you. I care for you. I pay the price for you. I want to use you. I'm going to bless you. I'm going to pour my spirit upon you. I'm going to use you around the world. So I was like, you know, at that moment, something happened to me. And I was like, I was very vulnerable. I was like, you don't know me. And he goes like, yes, I do. I say, I say you don't. And I say, nobody, is, nobody know me. Even my parents, they think they know me, but they don't. I'm not the person that I'm pretending that I am. Mm -hmm. I was such a good pretender. Mm -hmm. I'm like, they think I'm, I'm that little girl that, you know, sweet little girl, but I say I am not that sweet little girl. If I tell you what I did in my life, you won't believe that. How old? <laughs> I was like 20, 21, oh. yeah. Mm -hmm. I was like, if I told you what I did in my life, you won't believe it. He said, I know this. And something that was the very first time that I was completely honest. I, I say everything that happened, everything that I was uh, uh, blaming myself for, you know. Mm -hmm. I say I did this, I did that, I was wrong here, I lied, you know, I did this. My parents think this was this the way, oh no, that was me. I went on and on and explaining who I was really. Mm -hmm that nobody even know what I was doing in the secret, but something, I don't know, but I confess everything and I start crying and I say, yes, you don't know me, you can love me, I'm not, I'm not lovable, no, I'm a bad person, I'm not, I'm not, no, you can, you are too holy, you are too pure. And he say, I love you, mm -hmm. even before you were born, I know you and I love you. Mm -hmm. And I start crying, why you love me so much? Why? Because in my mindset, you know, for me, another for me, why I was lying, why I was pretending, mm -hmm. why I was showing different personality, because I wanted to feel love. Mm -hmm. I want people to accept me. Yeah, of course. So I have to pretend and I have to lie around me so people can take me, people mm -hmm. can, can put me in, you know? Mm -hmm. And that day I, 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 I start crying and I'm like, no, he said, yes, I do love you. I care for you, I have a plan for you. Mm -hmm. And I was like, tears was falling, and I was like crying. And he was leaving, and I'm like, you're not going, don't go out there with me. I like that process, you know. And he said, yes, I am with you. Mm -hmm. I will pour out my spirit upon you. I said, who are you? My name is Jesus. When he said that, I was like, I love you, Jesus. I love you too. Mm -hmm. I was like, yes, I love you too. You are the only person. I feel that love is so genuine. That love is so true. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't blame me. You don't condemn me. You're not judging me. Mm -hmm. You're not judging me. But you love me anyways. <laughs> I wake up. From that day on, it was a complete transformation in my life. Complete. When I was praying with my family, they doing it. it. It was like a relationship with him. It wasn't like me just trying to pray, but it was a relationship with him. You know, I, I, I talk to him like I'm talking to you. Mm -hmm. I'm talking to him. I, I can be honest to him. He's not gonna judge me. He's just gonna show me what to do. Mm -hmm. And I told him, I'm like, you know. My family, everybody's Muslim around me. I don't know, I can't even bring a Bible here. But I promise you, my heart is for you. Mm. I told him that my heart is for you. I want you, I want nothing else. It's you that I want. 
because you you love me like you know when I was like not lovable mm -hmm. so anytime that we were praying with my family I just bow down my head and I said Jesus remember I'm talking to you the <laughs> one who the one who revealed himself to me the one who talked to me I'm talking to you I want to let you know that I love you I'm praying to you please lead me guide me I don't know what to do mm -hmm. I don't know how to walk I don't know what step to take I want you more than anything. Mm -hmm. So I went to my girlfriend and I explained to her what happened to me. She she was very the excited, the Christian girl. Mm -hmm. She was so excited. She was like so happy. I say, you know, I told you that if she said this is how God speak to people. Mm -hmm. And I was like, yeah, he talked to me. He did talk to me. Like him, a great God, and he talked to me, me, Fabi. Mm -hmm. Like, you know? Mm -hmm. Who am I? So she goes like, yeah, he paid that price for you too. <laughs> so she prayed with me. And now the challenge for me, it was like how to work in my faith. I can't go to church because I live with my parents. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a mess. So, well, I was praying inside, in my heart, you know. Yeah. She showed me some prayers and I was praying. But for me, prayer was like talking. I was talking to him, actually. Let me say that I was talking to him. And then anytime I'm talk, I talk to him, I feel that peace and I feel him leading. It was like yeah. conviction in my heart, you know, um, some stuff that I'm doing that is still wrong and it would put conviction, go fix this, go talk to this person, you know, mm -hmm. go fix this situation. Mm -hmm. So and then I was working like that and what happened is I was, that company with who I was working, they they wanted some people to move to another state and my parent was like against for me to travel mm -hmm. to travel to go to another state they was like oh no there is no no you're not going you know mm -hmm. and but for some reason this was a miracle for some reason my mom come to me and she asked me she said you know you know because as as you know in the muslim culture you don't like talk like that to you with your father Mm. You talk more with the mama because you know you can you have access with her. You can talk like that. He will give her information uh -huh. and she will talk to you. Oh, it's like wow. kind of sign of respect, you yeah. know. So, wow. um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so my mom come to me. She goes like, yeah. I was talking with your dad and he told me that. Well, he think he can trust you enough. So if you wanna go, because I asked them like three times that I want to travel with the company I work with to another state and they was like oh no no you're a woman we can allow you to go you know so she she said yeah if you really want to go yeah we, we, we're fine with that mm -hmm. like this is a miracle mm -hmm. you know this is a miracle this come for my parents to let me travel to another state and they brought it up to you yeah wow <laughs> yeah, they brought that to me, exactly, themselves, I didn't even have to come to ask, she come to me, that was one week after I had that encounter with the Lord, Wow. she come to me and she goes like, well, I was talking with your dad and he goes like, yeah, we, I think we can trust Fabi, she can go, and then I traveled and I went uh, to another state, which is the called that Benin, so when I went to that state, this is another miracle and uh, that's how I see that that was God, that was the Jesus that revealed himself to me, mm -hmm. that was just him that was leading me. Mm -hmm. When I went there, the lady that was supposed to help us to find the apartment and all those stuff, she came to pick us at the airport. So that was on Friday mm -hmm. and she told me, okay, oh, excuse me, I know you just came here by yourself and you know, your people are here, but I'm the one who's supposed to help you, you know, to have your, you set up here. So, but she said, um, I'm going to ask you something and please, if you're not okay with that, it's going to stay between us. I just, I'm not supposed to do that. That's personal. I'm like, oh, what is that? And she goes like, I was thinking if you want to come with me to my church on Sunday. <laughs> oh my God. I joked. I was like, hallelujah. I'm like, amen. I was like, woo, thank you so much. Like, I want to go. <laughs> wow. I said, I want to go. I want to go to a church. And that was my first time. I said, I want to go to a church. I want to go to a church. I said, I just asked her, do you guys believe in Jesus Christ? <laughs> she, said, 
So I'm like, did your church believe in Jesus Christ? <laughs> that he died and rose again? She said, yes. I'm like, I'm going. <laughs> I said, I'm going to go. That's funny. I went to that church. <laughs> it was a little church. I went to that church on Sunday. Something phenomenal happened to me. They were worshiping the Lord and I was worshiping. I felt like I was home. I felt like this is what I need, you know? Mm -hmm. This is what I need. So, and then something happened. I got baptized the very same day. God baptized with the Holy Spirit and speaking the word of God that I never heard in my life. Wow. You know, start wow. speaking the word of God and I start speaking in tongues that very same day. Wow. Like I was on the floor crying and speaking in tongues and prophesizing over people. Oh my gosh, that was so amazing. Mm. So when I, when I get up, the pastor asked me, oh, after the service, which church were you going? And I was like, no church. <laughs> uh -uh, that's my first time I put my two feet in a church. Mm -hmm. It was amazing. That, is amazing. I, that, that was the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. That was just God that did that. Wow. So, yeah. It was so powerful. From, from that day on, I was like, you know, getting myself filled with the Word of God, praying and, uh, you know, asking God in direction. In every step that I'm taking, you know. Are you and still in that church? No, I'm not. I'm not in that church. That was in Africa. Oh, and as, oh, yes, still Africa. Yes, that was in Africa. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the way God led me, He make a way for me to come here in America. Mm -hmm. You know, now I'm able to travel. He said that in the vision, He said I'm gonna use you around the world. Now I'm able to to travel, and I'm sharing my testimony about the true living God, well, which he, is Jesus he's, Christ. He's using you around the world. From the point I put this on YouTube. It's gonna go all over the world. Amen. Amen. To God be the glory. And yes. now I'm working for um, for one of the Christian TV here in America. This is just God. This is just amazing because I was thinking how this could be possible. Mm -hmm. But the how doesn't belong to us. The how belong to Him. Mm -hmm. It's the one who chose us and is the one who is gonna lead us. And my prayer is, I'm praying and I'm trying to talk to people that I know around me and share this testimony. If you listen to me. I'm telling you, Jesus is real. It's the only way, it's the only truth, it's the only life. So nobody come to the Father except by the Son, by the Son. So uh, I, I, if you never give your life to Jesus Christ and you're listening to me, I have that encounter with you. And I pray that you will have that encounter with, you, with him. Hell is real and heaven is real. Anything can happen at any time. We don't, we don't, we don't hold, we don't hold tomorrow. But only thing that we know, if we give our life to Jesus Christ, we make heaven, and that's the most important thing. So, to God be all the glory. I'm so happy. I believe that that was the best decision that I ever take in my entire life is to give my life to Jesus. I'm not perfect, but I know that I'm serving a perfect God, and we're working, and it's been an amazing journey. I have so many testimonies to share, like the, 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 the hand of God upon my life in every step, in every area of my life, in my financial life, in my spiritual life, in my emotional relationship life. God is there. He is faithful. He is a good father. Mm -hmm. So I love you and thank you so very much, Donna, for allowing me to share my testimony. Thank you know, you. to God be all the glory. Amen. Amen.